Hey, I'm Nawel, comic book writer and co-founder of Negative Space Comics. You can find all the information you need at negativespacecomics.com. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes long, give or take, depending on the answers. And we are joined in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with talented and creative individuals in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our guest today is a very talented comic creator, as well as a comic writing organizer for a competition that is in comics. And we're joined today by the ever-talented... My name is Nawel. How are you doing? How's it going? Doing great. Thanks for thanks for chatting. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Awesome. So my name is Nawel. I'm a comic book writer, uh, screenwriter, and co-founder of Negative Space Comics. We host comic book writing competitions. Most are writing-based. We have a current one right now that's short, finished comics, but mostly are writing-based with the goal of finding mentorship for creators. Our aim is to help creators kind of like break in, get to talk to professionals, learn what they need to learn to kind of be able to thrive in the industry. So why was this an important competition to create? Why is mentorship important for comic writers? Yeah, I love that question. Growing up, I didn't have mentors. I wasn't lucky enough to have them. I started submitting to screenwriting competitions years ago. I can't remember when I started, but those are pretty regular. They're out there. There's a lot of them. And that's when I noticed that I did really well in one. I, I won a competition that got me in the room with a professional TV writer. And I recognized the importance of getting able to talk to someone that's actually actively doing the job you want to do and being able to learn from that. And that's when I kind of got the idea for this, for Negative Space, and kind of built something that I wish I had when I started writing comics and realizing that like all these questions that come up that you end up getting to learn from other people's experiences just because, yeah, there's just a lot to figure out when you're trying to like break into a new new world. Yeah, it's, it's definitely difficult. I mean, we may mimic in terms of people things that we enjoy, television series and, and films and, and maybe famous directors slash writers as well too, if we're looking from a film perspective. Uh, but we also look at our, our own inspirational people that we follow in the comics industry as well too. I mean, you know, Jeff Johns and a bunch of others, I'm sure that come, quickly come to mind. But looking at writing competitions, what is the fear of a, a creative writer submitting their work for the first time to a writing competition because i'm sure everyone is afraid to show their baby or showcase their work to to the masses oh yeah it's interesting i feel like when i was submitting to competitions years ago and something that i wanted to make sure uh we implemented in ours was the fact that it was also professionals that were going to be critiquing your work there's a lot of competitions out there, I guess, that if you're getting thousands of submissions, yes, it's hard to have people that are in the industry or working in the industry and succeeding in the industry get to be part of the judging side of the competitions. I feel like the legitimacy of competitions is probably like the biggest fear for people. And that's why we try to do our best to sh not show that our mentors are professionals and our judges are professionals so that people know that they aren't just putting it out there and some people are getting picked out by random. There's a long process that takes place when reading scripts. And like you said, these are, these are people's babies. Like I, I know how much I care about my scripts and my stories. So of course, I'm going to make sure that everyone's feels like their baby is taken care of in this process. I have to ask, you know, putting something together like a writing competition, like especially for comics specifically, because not only is it a huge geek industry, but it's a huge industry in the entertainment industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. but who is the team with you in terms of putting this all together? Unless are you, are you doing all of this yourself? Originally launched it with my partner. Her name's Alex Dvorak. She's my partner in life and in this business. So a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of like the building blocks of it all, we built together how it all works. She's also a writer, screenwriter and a journalist. So she understands the competition world and how it kind of all works a bit. So for the most part, it's the two of us. We're connecting with professionals. We're kind of reaching out, growing our circle. We're doing the marketing. We're doing the outreach. And to go along with your last question too, that was another 
big aspect of what I wanted to make sure we were doing with these competitions. Anyone that's going through the competitions, I'm reading their scripts personally. So I'm also part of like the reading part and I email and reach out to everyone that's submitted. I want to make sure that they feel that they're seen and they're a part of something. It is a super small team. It's the two of us that are kind of building everything that we have professional judges, we have professional readers, we have all of that in place. But for the most part, it's Alex and I that are doing all all the behind the scenes work. I was curious about the judges because I, mm-hmm. I, I looked at your website. I looked at a, a lot of the, I think, past judges that you've had as well too. And, and you have a, quite an extensive list as well, but mm-hmm. what makes a judge right for a competition like what you have put together? It's interesting because it, it does take building a diverse group of judges. It's not just about the specific judge. It's about the group. I do understand the fact that comics, movies, entertainment in general is somewhat subjective. Everyone kind of has a personal tastes, genres that they gravitate to, or certain stories that they love to read or love to see. So it is more about the group in, that is judging the competition. So for the mentors, you'll see we care about getting a writer, an artist, an editor, agent, so that you kind of get different aspects of the industry when you're doing your mentorship. And it's kind of like the same idea for the judging. We do want to make sure we get writers, assistant editors, and editors in there. We want to get artists in there because the biggest question I always get is like, why are you reaching out to me as an artist for a writing competition? And it's because I do appreciate the aspect that artists probably know better than most of us what can actually be taken from a page and made into a visual thing. So it really is about the team of judges and the team that's kind of diverse enough to really pick and choose which script is the right one. So how long does the competition last? Because I I know, and we'll talk about what categories you have as well too, Mm because I'm glad it's not just a singular, you've diversified into multiple uh, categories. So tell us about the process then in terms of the judging, and then we'll talk about the categories that you've segued your competition into? So the competitions will stay open for about two months. That gives people enough time to kind of find out about it if they want to like write something new or if they need to work on something. And it gives a window for the creators. After that, it's also another about two months for the rest of the process. It does take about three to four weeks to really get through the first batch of reading. Then we give judges another two to three weeks to get through the top batch. It's a long process of reading. We've built a a criteria on how to look at the scripts. It's looking at everything from plot, character, to structure, to how clear the story is, to marketability, to it hits all these different um, criterias that the judges kind of look through and make sure yes, readers and taste is subjective, but the way that we're breaking down how we look at a script does hit the same criteria for everyone. What what categories have you separated the competition in so that there's more flexibility for those that are submitting? Maybe that doesn't fit into a singular category. Our first competition was open to everyone in all genres. We do just want to have an open to everyone competition. And then we did want to focus on uh, underrepresented uh, groups that are trying to break into comics. We know that in comics, in our entertainment in general, there are some missing voices in there. So what we try to do with that is create competitions that were going to help those. So our second competition was for women writers only. Our, our third competition, our negative spaces, is looking for diverse characters from underrepresented creators. And our current competition is... Also open to everyone in any genre, but it's a short comics. So it's looking at the art as well. But as far as our other three, we want to have a competition for everyone, of course. Um, but when, then we want to kind of help the underrepresented communities get a leg up. Because right now we're, not right now, I think right now we're getting a lot more voices than ever before. But it doesn't hurt to help that keep growing. Yeah, the students won. Uh, so we ran it this year. I see that as like a mini competition because it's like super granular of who, who we're targeting for there. But the student one was like really fun. I, don't, I still don't know if we're going to run it every single year, but we're going to run it as much as possible. It's going to take a lot more connecting with schools. But the fact that there's more and more sequential art as a major, which I find to be awesome, nice. that'll keep growing. 
the aim there was to lower the cost of submitting because they're students. They might not have a day job. They might not be making money at the moment. So we want to also open it up for students price-wise so they can join, but more importantly, so they can actually get a leg up like as early as possible. I love our student competition winner. Ace is one of the coolest people I've ever met. They were a sequential art major at SCAD. Their writing is spectacular. And my favorite part about it is that they don't see themselves as writer first. They, they are artists. When anyone in our circle read their script, they were blown away. So yeah, that's one that we want to run every once in a while. Coming out of college or coming out of like whatever school you're going to, you're at, and you're already knowing professionals and you're growing your circle, it's a huge, huge boost to your career. Also to your confidence as a creative person. Oh, yeah. a lot of creative people just get beaten down by the world in general, thinking that art and creativity isn't a, a actual job. Oh, yeah. And I've been there. I can attest to that one. It's, it's not easy. That's the most inspiring part about like what I've been doing with Negative Space. It's the amount of times that I've heard from creators not just the winners, but finalists and semifinalists that they gain confidence in being able to do this, whether it's just doing it more on the side or whether it's being almost ready to jump into it full time. I've heard from plenty that boosted their confidence in their creativity and they're becoming comic book writers. Uh, and that just makes me so happy. So have any of the winners or, or anyone for that matter uh, that has submitted in the competition gone on to the next level of their professional careers in being either published or maybe self-published. We did have a finalist who was approached by an editor for a story. I don't believe that finished up with a, a full contract, but they got on their list of like creators to keep an eye on, um, which I believe is a huge boost to their, to their career. Let's see. We have a couple others that are also on those lists. We work really closely with a handful of editors that always reach out to me and just say like, where are they and blah, blah, blah. I do my best to keep up with our winners. Uh, I meet with them almost monthly. Um, it's very outside of like our mentorship that we say they'll get for winning, but I want to keep up with them and see where they're at and see where they're growing. And I know Robbie, who was our fall 2021 winner, he went off to start getting tables at cons and he started selling art and uh, ran a successful Kickstarter. So those are definitely successes in my, in my head. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Oh, uh, it's a great question. And it's interesting because I, I feel like I took, I, I take this question in the most literal sense, only because I moved to this country when I was 10. I'm originally from Argentina and I actually didn't know English when I moved here. So language had a lot of power in what I was doing. I have a, a million and one stories of miscommunications during my first few years uh, in the States, but it was definitely during those years of trying to understand English for the first time and trying to communicate with neighborhood kids that I started to realize how to really be able to tell a story and talk to someone and keep someone's attention when I had a hard time grasping the right words. Definitely understood language can go a long way. It's also interesting. I always say this. I, I learned English by by watching television. I, 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 I watched Simpsons and Friends, and there was something about the way that I learned through those shows that kind of helped me navigate school in the U.S. Because let's be real, if you're a kid from a different country coming to this country, school is going to be tough. So if you figure out how to talk to people through Simpsons and you're, you, you become a little Bart, uh, it, it works well. Also, a lot of the earlier years were, were really well done, although I haven't yeah. seen it in about 15 or so years. So Same, actually. But um, those, yeah, the, the 90s years and the early 2000s, those were fun. Who were you on Friends, though? I mean, I feel like most people would say that I'm like more of the Ross, but I hope that I'm not. <laughs> uh, I was more of a Chandler myself, but yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. I always, I wanted to be a Chandler just because he's too witty and I wanted to be a Joey because he's just too cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was definitely more leaning towards Ross. <laughs> Everyone usually asks, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you've ever received? But what's the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your career? It's one of those, like, it's easier said than done kind of pieces of advice. One that always I, th I think about regularly whenever I'm having a hard time with my writing or having my hard, a hard time with whatever creative aspect is just to stay in the room. 
that's that's been the biggest one that I I go to a lot. It's not always about the most successful or it's not always about the best writer or the best artist or the it's just whoever's working the hardest whoever stays around uh, even if it gets hard even if you're failing if even if you're not understanding it right away if you just stay in the room and keep working hard my mentor that i got a few years back he's the one that said that's those are the ones that make it and those are the ones that build a career the ones that stay in the room the ones that keep working and it's funny, uh, and I'll connect that. He's a screenwriting mentor. I was recently watching a, an old video of Jonathan Hickman and Scotty Young talking at a convention, and they said something very similar, where their go-to when they were younger and getting into the comic industry was just like looking around the room, and they would always be like, I'm going to work harder than that person. I'm going to work harder than that person. I'm going to work harder than that person. And then their go-to was just like just working the hardest, staying in the room, always being around, and always being willing to just put in the hours. So that's one that always stays with me. What challenges do comic writers face in today's industry? This is a question I, I get often from some of the younger, newer creators. I hold office hours every two weeks, uh, which are basically just me being on Zoom and open for anyone that wants to come by and chat and talk and ask questions and whatever it is. We always think about you make one thing and you get picked up for one thing and then they all kind of just start flooding in, right? You, as long as you get, someone says yes to you, then all the other yes, yes, yeses will come. But they always have questions about that first yes or like that first project or that first comic, whatever it might be. And I think that's the piece where a lot of people have the biggest hang up is how to make their first comic. And it's funny because like I've, I've seen this also from a lot of creators that are writers and artists who could do it all right that's a question i get a lot and that's how i also kind of navigated my way into like creating comics it's going short comics that was my way of getting in that's what i always tell people it's if you can create short comics if you're a writer artist you can pump out a six page comic in a month or less if you're not an artist you can find artists that aren't going to be that expensive that are also in the same kind of level or stage that you are it might take extra shifts if you don't have the money but you can create something short and all it takes is having a few of those little things to show off so that's what i tell them uh often i think everyone's hung up on like what's like the first thing i also hear this a lot from the editors that i talk to uh in the circle that we have at negative space everyone kind of wants to like jump in as a first time creator and say oh, oh my goodness i have the next paper girls or i have the next 150 issue like walking dead kind of huge saga or whatever it might be and that's when i always kind of like tell them like pump the brakes you'll get there and it's awesome you have the ideas and like let them keep bubbling and growing and doing whatever they need to do but it's the short comics that'll get you noticed uh as a new creator short comics or just doing your own little single issue crowdfunding campaigns but i always say six to eight ten pages only because that's a little easier and not as expensive to get made right now we have our first competition that is open to art and finished comics uh we have our short comics competition open it's for anything between two to ten pages so our regular deadline is coming up this Sunday, but we do have it about another month or so before the final deadline. Those we will be putting together and publishing online digitally. So that's a kind of place where if you are a new creator, if you're trying to put your first thing out in the world, that's the kind of competition where it's not just the winner that's going to get shown off, but it's 10 other finalists that are going to have their work published under our banner in some way. Also, going back to like your first question about like what people are scared about, we take zero rights or any kind of licensing, anything. We don't do any of that stuff. We're not trying to grab IP. That's not our aim in any way. So like when I say like we're going to be publishing you, like it's still going to be your comic. It's still going to be your baby. It's still going to be your characters, your plot, all that stuff. But we just get to show you off to our circle and our community. How big is your circle? I mean, if we're looking at social media, newsletters, and all those things, there's hundreds on there. I think we're we're building out it's our first year, so I think the growth has been fast, which I love. But more importantly, I think we're we're lucky enough to have our professional circle include editors, associate editors, writers at really cool indie like smaller publishers who are regularly active, which is my favorite part. Finding the kind of people to be part of our professional circle that just love being a part of something like this and love helping and love meeting new creatives. Yeah, it's super active professionals that I care more about in our circle. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? I have to shout out 
and give a million, a million and one thanks to my writing mentor. His name is Christian Lybrook. I joined a, a, a screenwriting program four or five years ago, and they put me in contact with Christian as part of like this pro track mentoring program. So it's through the screenwriting, but at this point we meet almost more than monthly, like every two weeks or so. And it's been about four years. And yeah, we started with a lot of screenwriting talk and that world, but now it, he's someone that I get to meet with regularly to talk about storytelling uh, and why stories work and why characters work. He's someone that I got to be able to just run his professional writing career. He's a screenwriter, uh, mostly TV. But yeah, he's someone that I definitely look to uh, to realize that the career is possible and it's that within grasp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's someone that I can look to and just like realize you don't have to be the Jonathan Hickmans or the Brian K. Vaughns that are just like at the top of the top. You can actually just run a career doing something that you love. And also on the side, caring a lot about helping others grow in those careers. Um, so he's someone that just kind of like embodies everything that I care about um, as far as a creator and a supporter of creators. From a professional standpoint, you are a successful comics writing competition uh, co-founder, as well as a, a script writer, as well as uh, everything else that you've done in your career professionally that we don't have time, unfortunately, this interview <laughs> to go into, but I'm sure in the future, I'd love to have you back on dive a little more in depth into your career as well. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I'll start by saying yes. I, I do think success is uh, an interesting metric and um, very different for everyone. I think about this often. My entire family is still back in Argentina. I think about often about where I grew up. I moved from there to a place I call Bumfuck, Maryland, in, in the middle of nowhere, where people who I grew up with in, in, in Maryland didn't know where Argentina was on the map. So it was very hard to like really find my way there. Yes, I think career-wise goes into whether I feel personally successful because I get to do what I love, and that's a big part of my personality. But I do also get to live in the best city in the world. I live in New York City. I get to spend time doing what I love. I get to spend time with the people that I love, living with my partner and building a, a company that supports growing writers. So I know that kind of brought professionally into the equation a little bit, but I think it is part of it. And personally... I do wake up most days happy. So I think in that sense, 1000% I'm successful. Waking up is just half the battle, you know? Yeah. Waking up, making the bed, and then the rest <laughs> happens. <laughs> the reverse of success is failure. How do you mm -hmm. deal with your failure? Oh, that was that was a hard one to, to work through, uh, especially, let's say, 10 or plus years ago when I was writing in college. Failure, as I've gotten to understand it, is has to be seen as a learning experience. Um, there's there's no other way. If you want to keep growing, if you want to keep building, uh, if you want to keep learning, forever learning is like one of my favorite uh, aspects in life. You have to always want to keep growing and learning. There's no way you'll ever know everything in the world. So you always want to keep knowing more and failures happen, mistakes, uh, stumbles, mishaps, speed bumps, whatever you want to call them, unless you're evaluating them and learning and growing from them they're going to stomp on you. So you have to evaluate and grow and learn from every single one of them. If you're not failing, you're not growing, or if you're not failing, you're not trying, whatever that saying is, I think is, I think it's, it's fitting because you always should be pushing towards new and pushing to, to do things that are not comfortable for you. And that's just going to lead to failure or failure, whatever you want to label it. But yeah, you just got to keep, keep your head up. Um, like you just said, waking up the next day is half the battle. And if you just keep waking up the next day and doing it again, you're going to learn from it and you're going to keep growing. The young generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired and creative in their own way. And the fact that you're not only hosting a comics writing competition, giving the younger generation a platform to promote themselves and to showcase their talents is, is an inspiring thing. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I think I think it's it's all about giving back. If you're doing your best to help others, if you're doing your best to pick someone up, help them grow, whatever it is, I think that automatically is going to inspire others to do the same. 
And that's what I always hope. The more and more we help people, who knows, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I might not be around to do something like this. A year from now, I might not be around to do something like this. But hopefully people see something like what we're doing and they want to do the same because they recognize how much helping others helps yourself. And I, I do truly believe that part of it. So yeah, it's all about giving back. And as, as long as you're doing your best to support others and make a space for others, it, it'll show others that they also should do it and want to do it. I will say, no, I, I was just going to throw in there, like pun intended with like the, the space thing. I, I'm trying to like work in negative space into like the line in there somehow to just sound super witty. <laughs> Much like comedy, timing is hard. Yeah. <laughs> If your life was a movie, TV series, or comic book, whatever medium you'd like to foray into, I'm assuming TV and film, what would its title be? And because I like music, what would its soundtrack be? Oh, okay. <laughs> title wise, that's an interesting one. I, so I, I I hate to say like comeback kid because it's not really like I don't I never I don't really have a comeback but like and it's also like a super cheesy line yeah I don't know there's there's something about the aspect of growing through the rubble some something something big like that I don't know <laughs> and as far as soundtrack I try my best to be fun and positive all the time and enjoy life most of the music I like to listen to is probably like rock and depressing and whatever so for some reason i just grab anything from radiohead okay computer and i'm just kind of like <laughs> good with it yeah there's something about like this build up that just kind of makes your heart just race and like this like, that's the kind of music that, that that works for me i've had two albums playing on repeat for the last three months and it's either my Chemical Romance, uh, Black Parade. And I feel like that's one of the greatest, most perfect albums ever. So put it on anytime I need to like just work and just rock out and work. Or Kendrick Lamar's new album, which is another one of, one of the most awesome albums I've listened to in a really long time. And it's just been those two on repeat. Someone asked me recently about a song that's probably like my theme. And I go back to Money Trees by Kendrick Lamar. That's one I care about because I do just want to live under money trees <laughs> at some point. Well, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I super appreciate you having me. I had a lot of fun. Thank you, Kurt. Anytime. For those that want to support you and want to look at the, of course, writing competition and any other work that you put together in terms of negative space comics, tell us where we can find you online and, of course, the website and, and any other social media you'd like to promote. Yeah, I'll say if you want to find out more information about the competitions, uh, the mentors, the judges, and all that, um, negativespacecomics.com is the place to go. Twitter is probably our favorite uh, social media. We're definitely on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, all that stuff. But Twitter is our most uh, communicated place. Uh, it's neg space, N-E-G space comics. And I'll also say uh, my email is everywhere, so I'm sure you can find it, but um, I'm always available for anyone that has questions, anyone that wants to know more, anyone that wants to have a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, and you just have something you want to just reach out about, um, you can reach me at Nahuel, N-A-H-U-E-L, at negativespacecomics.com. I'm always available. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You could, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, that's the word to, not the number two. If you use the number, it is something completely different you don't want to go to, trust me. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgtmedia. And our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash tgtmedia. Support us if you like interviews like this and of course, everything else that we're going to be doing in the future as well. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.